Hello everyone. My name is Kilo Sarabi Isa, popular in and as Godmas, a student from Bahrain University, Kano. Welcome to Caltronics Jam Tutorial. In this video, we are going to solve Jam Pass Question 2021 physics. Here we go. Question 1. A body of mass 10 kg rests on a rough inclined plane whose angle of tilt is variable. This is gradually increased until the body starts to slide down the inclined plane at 30 degree. The coefficient of limiting friction between the body and plane is A 0.3, B 0.5, C 0.58, D 0.87. So let's start. This is a, uh, a computational question. So we require a solution to this question. So now uh, this is a case of friction. So you know it's a sliding body. So it has an angle. So let us assume uh, this diagram to represent the information given in the question. So here is a sliding body and it has an angle theta so we ask to find the coefficient of friction of this body for it to slide down so the coefficient of friction mu is unknown so we know the formula of finding coefficient of friction in an inclined plane is always is equal to tan theta where theta is an angle it makes with horizontal so now this is a formula but for us to understand this question conceptually we require uh, a conceptual uh, description from this diagram so let us have it so that we can match the uh, equation and then solve the question so now in this diagram we know uh, there will be a weight of the body which is always acting down so there is a weight which is mg always so for this body there will be a sliding force which is tending to fill the object to downward to downward or down the plane so this is mg sine theta due to the angle it makes so now uh, for it to slide down there must be a coefficient of friction between the inclined plane and the object which is opposing the sliding uh, uh, force so let us call it f so of course there will be a reaction force which is always uh, uh, which is always perpendicular to the plane so this is the uh, reaction force so this will, this will be mg cos theta so this is the reaction so let us call it r so now from this diagram we can see that uh, the summation of force along the inclined plane, let's call it Fx, is equal to zero. So this means that the force F, because it's positive, the down one is negative, minus mg sine theta is equal to zero. So this means that by making subject of the formula, F is equal to mg sine theta. So again, we know that uh, uh, perpendicular to the plane we have two forces that is taken off as positive again we can say it r minus mg cos theta is equal to zero so r by making subject of the formula is equal to mg cos theta so now going back to the uh, friction the relation between the friction force the reaction and the coefficient of friction mu is mu is equal to the friction force 1 over the normal action so this friction force as we derive is the same as mg sine theta so 1 over the reaction force which is mg cos theta so for here mg goes mg so remains mu is equal to sine theta over cos theta so from trigonometric identity we know that sin theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta is equal to tan theta so that is the formula i just uh, write down 
for the first time so this is the derivation of the formula so therefore mu is equal to 10 theta so it is our work if it is dumb we can simply use the formula the reason why we are just doing this is for you to understand beta so this is a final formula so you just apply it and you foot so from the information given uh, as we said mu is unknown and theta is 30 degree from the question so we just substitute the value of theta and find the unknown in this question the mass will not work because we don't have any exploration with mass so therefore the coefficient of friction is equal to 10 theta which is 10 30 degree so for a metric table we know that 10 30 is approximately equal to 0.5 h so that is the answer so now we look at the option you see option c is the same as 0.5 h therefore option c is the answer so option c is the answer this is question one so now we are going to question two now so question two let us again read the question so uh in question two an inclined plane which makes an angle of 30 degree with a horizontal has a velocity ratio of what so this is the question from machine therefore uh, we have the angle again which is theta and we have to find the velocity ratio so from machine equation we know that velocity ratio is always equal to one over sine theta so now our theta is our theta is 30 degrees sorry is 30 degree is given so the velocity ratio is unknown so we just substitute the value which is 1 over sine 30 degree so now from trick uh, from special angle we know that sine 30 is the same as 1 over 2 so now we take the reciprocal of 1 over 2 which is equal to 2 therefore we will look at the option so option a is 2 which is the answer so answer here is a then question 3 what is the length of the liquid column in a barometer tube that will support an atmospheric freezer of uh, of 10,200 uh, uh, of 10, Newton meter. If the density of the liquid is 2600 kilogram per meter cube. So in this question we ask to find the, the height or the length of the column. So we have the following option. A we have 0 0.5 meter. B we have 0 0.76 meter. C we have 3.92 meter. D we have 39.23 meter. <coughs> so let us have a short diagram for this question so we have question question three so assuming this is the the barometer so we have a little bit inside it so in this case we have atmospheric pressure which is acting down so we have atmospheric pressure and again we have from here to here is the height so this is the height or length of the barometer again we are we are having the acceleration due to gravity which is acting down so now uh when the density experiment of fraser you know that fraser is equal to rho is equal to rho g h where rho is a density g is acceleration due to gravity and h is a height so now in this case we ask to find the height because we have a data we have fraser which is equal to uh, Newton meter and we have acceleration due to gravity always is approximately 10 meter per second square which is a constant so in this case we ask to find the height so now let us make the height to be as the formula for some full uh, uh for some full expression so height by dividing by sine by the coefficient of the height that is rho g is equal to uh pressure all over acceleration due to gravity uh density times acceleration due to gravity so now we are going to substitute our values so the pressure here is 10 uh 2000 all over the density 
so we also have the density so we have density which is from the first in which is 2600 kilogram per meter cube the unit is very important so we have 2600 times acceleration to gravity which is 10 so 1 0 goes 1 0 those 2 0 goes 2 0 then 1200 divided by uh, 102 divided by 26 is equal to from long division is equal to uh, 3.92 meter so this is equal to 3.92 which is corresponding to option c therefore answer is option c so that is the answer question 4 40 meter cube of liquid fee is mixed with 60 meter cube of another of another liquid cube if the density of phi and Q are 1 kilogram meter uh, kilogram per meter cube and 1.6 kilogram per meter cube respectively, what is the density of the mixture? Option A 0 0.05 kilogram per meter cube, B 1.25 kilogram per meter cube, C 1.3 kilogram meter per, per meter cube, D 1.36 kilogram per meter cube. So now this is a density question. So let us get our data uh, first. So we have the volume. The volume of P is equal to 40 meter cube. We have the volume of Q is equal to 60 meter cube. And we have the density of phi. Density of P is equal to 1 kilogram per meter cube. And we have the density of Q. The unit is very important. We have 1.6 kilogram per meter cube. So we have to find the density of the mixture. So let us call it PQ. We mean the density of the mixture. So to get the density of the mixture, we need to know the total mass and the total volume of the mixture. So to get the total mass of the mixture, we need to use this the, uh, the formula that is density is equal to mass over volume. So we have mass and we have volume for each uh, component. So let us find the mass of each component so that we can add and to get the total mass and we add the volume to get the total volume. So by making subject of the formula, mass will be equal to the density times the volume. So now let us find the mass of uh, component V and that of Q. So mass of component V is going to be equal to the density of component V times the volume of component V. So what is the density of component P? When the above we have is 1 times the volume which is 40. So which is equal to 40 kilogram. So again mass of component Q is equal to the density of component Q and is the volume of component Q which is what is the, what is the density the density is 1.6 times the volume which is 60 which is equal to uh, which is equal to 96 kilogram so now uh, we can find the mass of the mixture that is let us call it M MPQ that is the mass of the mixture which is going to be equal to the mass of component P plus the mass of component Q which is equal to 40 plus 96 so by addition mass of the mixture is equal to is equal to 136 kilogram so let us find the volume of the mixture that is volume of pq which is equal to the volume of component p plus volume of component q which is equal to 40 plus 60 so the volume of the mixture is equal to 100 meter cube therefore the density of the mixture is equal to the mass of the mixture all over the volume of the mixture
So what is the mass as we got is 136 1 over the volume of the mixture which is 100. So this is equal to 1.36 kilogram per meter cube. So here option D is 1.36 which is the answer. So the answer is option D. So question 5. The resistance of platinum wire at the ice and steam point are 0 0.75 ohm and 1.05 ohm respectively. Determine the temperature at which the resistance of the wire is 0 0.9 ohm. Let's solve it. So this question required a diagram. So let this represent uh, the temperature and this represent the resistor. So this is the temperature in degrees Celsius and this is the resistor in ohm. So uh, let's take the upper point at the steam point and the lower point at the ice point. So we have the corresponding value of resistance here. So for this, we know the uh, the upper point, that is the steam point, is always 100 degrees C. That is the temperature, and it's also given in the, uh, from the question. And the ice point is 0 degrees C. So now the corresponding value of steam and ice point are, for steam we have 1.05, and for ice we have 0 0.75 so we have uh, a certain amount along the resistor which is 0 0.9 so we have 0 0.9 and we are looking for the corresponding temperature of this resistor so it will lie somewhere around here so let us call it t so that is unknown so our text is to find this the unknown temperature so in this question we require the knowledge of interpolation so we apply the interpolation, that is we take a point and subtract a lower point and take another point from the other uh, uh, parameter or quantity and subtract the sum point. So that's how we are doing. So now let us start from this. So now let's take the, uh, the middle point that from the unknown, from the uh, resistance line, that is 0 0.9. That is 0 0.90 is the same minus the lower point which is 0 0.75 well over then we take the upper point minus the lower point again 1.05 minus 0 0.75 is equal to then we go back to a line of temperature so we take the sum value that is for 0 0.90 we have t then minus the lower point which is zero then all over the upper point which is 100 minus zero again so by subtraction we have 0 0.15 all over 0 0.3 is equal to t minus zero is t all over 100 so to get the temperature then we cross multiply and make t to be the center of the formula. So by cross multiply, we have t is equal to t, or we can say it 0 0.3 times t is equal to 0 0.15 times 100. So it was through by the coefficient of t, which is going to be 1.5 times 100 all over 0 0.3. So now, uh, 0 0.3 into 0 0.15 is the sum as 5, so we multiply this is the sum as 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 100 is going to be equal to 50, so 50 degrees C. Therefore, the temperature is 50 degree C. So, option B is the answer. So, answer is option B. Question six. <clears throat> Which of the following statements? Which of the following statements supports the assumption that light travels in a straight line? A. Light can be diverted. 
the source of light for those distinct shadows for what they counted. See source of light for those in the Gyarus pattern on his suitably placed screen. The light can be reflected. So the option, the correct option here is uh, light produce a distinct shadow for a big object. This is because if you if you place an optic object on the path of light, you observe that the light cannot pass. So this means that light is traveling in a straight line. So that is because we are not talking about the properties of light. Diffraction, reflection, and, uh, and interference are all properties of light. But we are looking for the properties of light that support the assumption that light is a straight line. Because when we have a diffraction, diffraction cannot guarantee that light is a straight line or reflection. It's just about whether the light uh, can be reflected or not, or can be diffracted when it crosses a boundary between two layers of different density. So for this uh, issue, light is straight line because when you place an object object and it is fast, you can see light cannot fast, meaning it's traveling a straight line. So therefore the answer here is option C uh, is option is option B. No is option 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 d yes so it's option d that is source of light for this distinct shadow for of a object so that is then question seven so question seven said if an object is placed in front of two mirrors inclined at 90 degree how many image will it be upon so we have the angle here which is 90 degree and we're looking for the number of images so we can just apply a formula to solve this problem that is the number of image produced is always equal to 360 all over the theta minus one so the number of image is equal to 360 all over 90 minus one so 360 divided by 90 is the sum as 4. Then 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. So now option C is the answer, which is 3 image. So we have 3 image. So option C is the answer. So question H an object three centimeter height is placed sixty centimeter from the converger lens whose focal lens is twenty centimeter. Calculate the size of the image pump. So let us jot down our data and solve the question. So, uh, the distance of the object from the lens is donated by U, which is 60 centimeter from the question, and the focal lens is 20 centimeter, and the height of the object is 30 centimeter so we had to find the distance of the image from the lens so we can apply the formula that is 1 over focal lens is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over b so we are looking for b so 1 over l minus 1 over u is equal to 1 over b so we can now substitute our values. So the focal length is 20, so we can set 1 over 20 minus 1 over u, which is 60, is equal to 1 over 
so we find the LCM here which is 60 so the LCM here is 60 so now 60 divided by 20 is 3 60 divided by 60 is 1 which is equal to 1 over 1 over B so 3 minus 1 is 2 1 over 60 is equal to 1 over 2 divided by 60 is 1 over 30 which is 1 over to get B we take the reciprocal that means B is 30 centimeter so therefore uh, the distance of if h is starting so but in the question we ask to find the height of the image so we have given the height of the object the height of the object is given as i wrote it so the height of the image is what we are looking for so now we can apply the formula for magnification so magnification is equal to uh, the distance of image from the line solved over the distance of object and which is equal to b over u what is b is 30 u is 60 which is going to be equal to 30 over 60 0 0.5 so this is a magnification and again we know that magnification is equal to the height of the image all over the height of the object so this means that we are looking for the height of the image which is equal to magnification times the height of object therefore the height of image is equal to magnification which is 0 0.5 times the height of object the height of object is 3 is 30 uh, is 3 is 3 is 3 meter is 3 centimeter so therefore this is equal to 1.5 1.5 centimeter so therefore option b is the answer so option b is the answer which is 1.5 so question 9 a full of water appears to be 1 centimeter deep on the viewer when viewed vertically from above if the collective index of water is 1.33, what is the actual depth of the fall? So let us jot down our data. So question, question 9. Uh, we have afferent diff. Afferent diff is given, which is 1 centimeter. And the real D is what we are looking for. The reflective index of water is 1.33. So now uh, we apply the formula that says the reflective index is equal to the real D all over the afferent D. So we are looking for real D. Then we can cross multiply. The real D is equal to the reflective index times the afferent D. So therefore, we substitute our value. The real d is equal to the afferent d, uh, the reflective uh, uh, index times the afferent d. So therefore, the real d is equal to 1.33 centimeter. So, which is option C. So option C is the answer. Option C is the answer. Question 10. A ray of light is incident at an angle of 30 degrees on top surface of a parallel side glass block of reflective index 1.5. The ray finally emerged from the lower surface. What is the angular deviation of the emergent ray? So let us solve the question. Question 10. So this question really repair the diagram. So supposing this is a first layer and this is the second layer so it incidented uh, here so this is the incident ray and it has angle of 30 with normal so again it will go along the way and 
emerge and also reflected at the other layer. So this is the angle of refraction. It reflected from this layer. So here we have the angle of the refracted ray. So oh, this is a refracted ray. So this is the angle of refraction R. So we have the emergent angle here. So the emerging angle is what we are looking for for us to get the, the deviation. So this is the sum as what the angle of uh, refraction, refraction, which is the sum here. So this angle of refraction is the sum of the angle of instant in the lower surface or lower medium. So now for us to get this question, let us jot down our data. So first we have uh, the refractive in this for an air to glass because this is like a glass so this is air is from air now so from air to glass is 1.5 and we have the angle of incident is 30 degree so you're looking for deviation deviation so deviation is always the sum as the angle of angle of um emergent minus the angle of instant which are we can prove because we don't know the angle of emergent so for us to get this let us apply the snail's law you know snail's law of refraction so from snail's law we know that the angle uh the refractive index for air to glass is equal to sine instant angle all over sine refractive refractive angle so we are looking for this angle of refraction. So we cross multiply. So the angle of refraction is equal to what? The angle of incident all over the refractive index of air to glass. So this angle of refraction is equal to psi incident which is 30 degree all over the refractive index which is 125. So this sign 30 degree from spatial angle is the sum as 0 0.5 all over 1.5. So dividing this, we have sign R is here we have 1 into 1.5, uh, 0 0.5 into 1.5 is 1, and 1.5 here is 3. So we have 1 over 3. So now let us leave it like this because we are going to use it in the subsequent calculation. So now, the ray instant on the lower surface, meaning what? We are now moving from what? Elastic air on the lower surface. So this is equal to what? This is equal to uh, sine the what? The refraction because this is now become the angle of instant in the lower surface all over the what? The angle of emergent ray. So, from Snell's law again, we know that the angle from the refractive index from glass to air is equal to 1 over refractive index from air to glass. This will give you us the ability to find the angle from glass to air. So this means that the angle from glass to air is equal to 1.1.5. So you can now substitute so let us substitute our value so we have 1.1 1 over 1.5 is equal to sine is equal to sine r which is 1 over 3 all over sine emergent ray so we now cross multiply and make this sine emergent to be the subject of the formula which is 1.5 times 1 over 3 so 1.5 times that is divided by 1 over 3 to sum as 0 0.5 so to get this we are going to take the sine inverse of both sides so sine inverse of 0 0.5 is the sum as 30 degree so the deviation here is going to be equal to e minus i that is 30 degree minus 30 degree so which is equal to 0 30 minus 30 is 0 so this means that angle of deviation is zero degree so meaning no deviation therefore question 10 the correct option is d option is d 
So question 11. Four lenses are being considered or used as a microscope object. Which of the following focal lens is most suitable? A minus 1.5 mm, B plus 5 mm, C 5 cm, D plus 5 cm. So, you know, microscope is a convex lens. The focal lens is positive and of small value, that is 1.5 mm. So, it must be a positive because it's a convex lens. To produce a large but versus virtual image because we need virtual image in what microscoping object that is enlarging lenses so it's supposed to be virtual so since it is pointless so we need virtual but if it is pointless so we need what positive therefore the correct option is plus five millimeter which is b So answer is five millimeter, which is B plus five millimeter. Question twelve. A heavy object is suspended from a string and lowered into water so that it is completely submerged. The density of here lighter because a. The density of water is less than that of object. B. The pressure is lower, is low just below the water surface. C. Is experience and uptrust. D. The tension in the string to lies a part of the weight. So option C is a correct option because uptrust act upward and offers a downward force. That is correct. So for this, the reason is the optrus is always acting off so that to afford the weight of the body. So, option C is the answer. For example, if you have a body, this is water. So, this is body. So, always the weight is acting down, that is MG. So, we have an optrus which is opposing the water motion, is acting on. We may have a viscosity force, it's also what acting off so therefore this the reason is just because the weight is opposing the optus is opposing the weight of body therefore the body appears to be <coughs> less denser to, less denser from fear when it is in air so option c is the answer then question 13 which of the following is a drive unit <laughs> this is one of the simplest question i see you may you might encounter in jump so which one is drive unit which is d neutral so question 13 is the answer is d newton so no more explanation everybody know this because newton is drive for a much the mass and acceleration due to gravity therefore is drive unit it cannot depend on itself so question 14 two objects when having three times the mass of the other are dropped at the same time from a tall building when they are above the ground the two objects will have the same a momentum b kinetic energy c potential energy and d acceleration due to gravity so option d is a correct option because acceleration due to gravity does not depend on mass so therefore one object having mass is greater than the other doesn't guarantee that or doesn't indicate that the acceleration is different as far as they are dropping from the same level they are following the same path the acceleration due to gravity is constant and here if it is a for example momentum momentum is a product of mass and velocity therefore the one that has high mass will have high momentum and similarly for energy kinetic energy is also dependent on mass that is half mv square so it's depend on mass the higher the mass the higher the kinetic energy also potential energy is depend on mass but acceleration is a velocity over time therefore acceleration does not depend on mass hence the correct option for question 13 is d which is acceleration due to gravity 
then I mean question question 14 this is question 14 and I have done with question 13 which is this is question 13 sorry so this question question 13 so question 14 is D then question 15 which was the following is an literal equilibrium a a heavy weight suspend on a string b upon resting on it is slant edge c a heavy base table lamp then d is a beam at a balance in use the correct option here is b because upon resting on it is slant edge will tend to come to rest in it is new position therefore the correct option is option b so 15 right option is option b always as we are having a coin which is resting and it is slant edge so this is like a horizontal sorry so this is a horizontal so therefore it will, whenever you tend to take it like it is original position it will tend to come down to rest at its original position so this is like a coin rest on its slant edge this is a slant edge so that is it so question 16 a ball is thrown vertically into the air with an initial velocity to you what is the greatest height it reaches? so question 16 this is a question from projectile looking for the maximum height so now uh, since it is projected assuming this is a flare so the body is projected so uh, we have initial velocity u and we have angle theta and to reach this fixed point is what this is a maximum height h max so now we apply equation of motion that is b square is equal to u square plus 2 gh so in this case the final velocity at this point is equal to zero as we tend to come down so now the final velocity is zero and since it is now going off an acceleration due to gravity is always what going is always acting down so therefore at maximum height at maximum height g is minus g and b is zero so we now substitute so b is equal to u square plus 2 into minus g then instead of putting her head then we put one head max so now uh zero is equal to u square minus 2 g minus 2 g head max So therefore, making h to be the solution of the formula, h max is equal to u square all over 2g. Sorry, in this case, we don't have angle. So therefore, we just substitute our values out having angle. So therefore, option D is the answer. Seventeen. Which of the following assumptions is made in a simple pendulum experiment? A. Suspending string is in uh, is inextensible. B. Bob has a finite size. C. Bob has a definite mass. D. Initial angle of the oscillation must be large. The option, the correct option here is A because the string must be massless and inextensible. This is a correct assumption of simple pendulum experiment. The other are all are not valid. Like for example, B Bob has uh, has a finite size. It must be it's not a finite really. 
then see Bob has a definite mass. The mass must not be definite. The last one is the initial angle of oscillation must be that which is wrong. Initial angle must be small. Small angle is square. So the correct option here is option A. So correct option is A. Question 18. Mercury is suitable as a barometric fluid because A as one uniformly, B is of it, C is several times denser than D is a good conductor. Correct option here is C because mercury, of course, is denser than water. So, this is the only property that suitable for mercury to choose as a parametric fluid because the property that is as one uniformly this is wrong actually it's a good conductor actually it's not suitable for choosing a particular fluid or object to act as a parametric fluid even it is for good conductivity i don't mean we can choose metal to be a barometer so this is one actually the only property that is suitable for microwave is because it then serves in water. Therefore, the correct option is option C. Question 19. Which of the following properties make metals ideal for cooking utensils? A. High coefficient of expansion. B. Good conduction of heat. C. Low specific heat capacity. D. Poor radiation heat. So the correct option here is D. The correct option is option B. That is good conduction of heat. <clears throat> the good conductivity of metal, metals is the fact that you use metal as a uh, good for cooking utensil because it conduct heat so we need heat to, to heat our food or object whatsoever kind of thing we want to heat but for low expansion it's not the reason really and poor radiation of heat is also not the reason the good conduction is the reason therefore the correct option is option b then, question 20. <coughs> a gas occupies a volume of 300 centimeter cubes at a temperature of 27 degrees C. What is it is volume at 54 degrees C when the freezer is constant? So this is equivalent to Boyce's law in chemistry. Uh uh not Boyce's law. The the charge law. The Fraser, sorry, the Fraser law. That is uh, uh, the Fraser is constant. So uh we have given that a balloon, let it to be B one is 300 centimeter cube. Uh, theta 1 is given in degree Celsius, so we need to convert it to Kelvin. So plus 270 degrees, which is equal to 300 K. And B2 is unknown, is what we are looking for. And T2 is given as B4 plus 270. So T2 is equal to 327 Kelvin. So for constant term free P R Frazier P1 is equal to P2. So we can apply the general uh, gas equation that is P1 P1 over T1 is equal to P2 P2 over T2. 
So P1 is equal to P2, meaning pressure is constant. So this pressure goes like this. Then B1 over T1 is just low, not pressure low. So P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So this is equivalent to just low in chemistry at constant pressure. The volume is directly proportional to the temperature. So I'm looking for B2. So make B2 to be the subject of the formula. So B2 is equal to I cross multiply B1 over T1 then times T2. So therefore we substitute our values, which is 300 over 300 times the temperature to which is 327. So B2 is equal to 327 centimeter cube. Is 300 goes 300. Therefore, the correct option here is C. Option C is the correct option. That is 327 centimeter cube. Question 21. When two objects P and Q are supplies with the same quantity of heat, the temperature change in P is observed is observed to be twice that of Q. The ratio of the specific capacity of P to Q is let's solve. So let us jot down our data. So let the change in temperature of Q is equal to theta. Then this is like a word problems. The Q of T is two theta because it's two wise. Again, as given, the quantity of heat in P is equal to the quantity of heat in Q. So we know that for a specific capacity. Uh, the quantity of heat in P is equal to what? Mass of P, space speed capacity of V, and the change in temperature of V. Again, Q, Q is mass of Q, space speed capacity of Q, the theta of Q. So, uh, as also given in the question, the mass of V is half of that of what of q or we can say the mass of q is twice that of t so and vice versa i can take it in this form so or i say mass of q is two times mass of p or mass of p is half of mass of q it's all the same so now we said in the first thing the quantity of heat in p is equal to the quantity of heat in q so this means that mass of P, specific capacity of P, the theta of V is equal to mass of Q, specific capacity of Q times the theta of Q. So we now substitute our expressions. So mass of P is half of mass of Q specific capacity of V. The temperature of V is the sum as 2 theta which is equal to the mass of Q specific capacity of Q times what? Theta. So this theta goes theta, mass of Q goes mass of Q, then 2 here goes 2. This means that specific capacity of C is equal to specific capacity of Q. So I now divide both sides. So my specific capacity of V over space capacity of Q is equal to 1. So meaning what? Like I can say it 1 over 1. So specific capacity of C ratio specific capacity of Q is equal to 1 ratio 1. It is 1 ratio 1. So therefore the correct options is option is option C from the question. So correct option is option C.
uh, question 22. Which of the following is true of sound? A. Sound travels faster in air at 20 degrees C than at 30 degrees C. B. The frequency of a given sound wave changes when it crosses a boundary separated to medium. The wavelengths of a given sound in air decrease every time for each other. The sound cannot be reported. The correct option here is option C. Because, uh, uh, sorry, is yeah, it's option, it's option C. That is a uh, wavelength of a given sound decrease as the temperature increase. No, it's option A. It's option A. Let us explain. Uh, the sounds travel faster at 20 degrees. No, no, question C. Because let's write the question. Question 22. For option A, we know that the velocity of sound is directly proportional to the square root of temperature. So meaning the higher the temperature, the higher the velocity of light. So option A said uh, traveling faster in 20 degrees C than 30 degrees C, which is wrong. Suppose traveling faster in 30 degrees C than 20 degrees C. So option A is wrong. Then B, the frequency of a sound, of a given sound wave, change when it crosses the boundary separating between two layers, which is wrong. And the frequency is always constant of the sound wave, cannot change while crossing a boundary between two layers. Then C, the wavelength of a given sound in air decrease as the temperature increase, which is correct, because wavelength is, uh, is changing with temperature. Of course, the wavelength decreases with temperature. The higher temperature, the lower the wavelength. So therefore, option C is a correct answer. D, sound cannot be reflected, which is wrong. Sound can be reflected, which is called what? A -O. That is a sound we had after reflection of sound. That is a reflection of sound. So sound can be reflected. Therefore, option C at the correct option. Option C is the answer. Now question 23. A piece of wood of mass 40 gram and uniform cross-sectional area of 2 cm. Clothes upright in water. The length of the wood of mass is. So let's solve question. Now We have given that the mass is 40 gram. Area is 2 centimeter square. So we can apply principle of flotation. And you know that this mass of wood by principle of flotation is equal to the mass of water display mass of water display or mass of displaying fluids so the fluid here is one so now from density is <coughs> is mass mass over volume so we can now say that the mass is equal to the what the density times the volume so this means that uh, this means that the mass is given as 40. So the, this is in what? In gram. So we use the density in gram per centimeter. Since here is gram. So density of water in gram per centimeter is 1 gram per, hour per centimeter. If it is in kilogram per meter, it is 1000. For this is 1, since it is gram per centimeter. Then time is a volume, which is what we are looking for. So we can say it now. This gram goes gram remain what? centimeter but once you by one centimeter you know that the volume is going to be what 40 
centimeter cube so this is the the volume so what we are looking for the for the lens so now we know that the volume is equal to the word area times the lens or times the height so we are looking for the lens so therefore lens is volume over area what is the volume the volume we got is what 40 all over area which is 2 centimeter so therefore the lens is 20 centimeter hence option D is a option C is the answer which is 40 centimeter question 24 the fridge on a gas of a constant gas thermometer at the ice point is 325 millimeter of mercury and at the steam point is 75 millimeter of mercury find the temperature when the freezer of the gas is 490 millimeter of mercury so this is another computational question So, uh, question 24, we need to also apply the interpolation. So, yeah. So, let us assume here is a section of Fraser millimeter of mercury. And this is the line of temperature in Kelvin. So, uh, here is the, um, the upper point. This is the lower point. So, the upper point is the steam point at Kelvin, which is 3. 73 and here is 273 so this is the unknown term feature so this is the corresponding feature of the upper point which is s75 and the lower term feature at the lower point is 325 and the corresponding feature of the unknown term feature is 490 mm so we also apply the interpolation here we take the value and subtract the lower value so now we can say 490 minus the lower point which is 325 all over the upper point which is h75 minus the lower point which is 325 all also are subtracting the lower point which is equal to t minus 273 all over 373 minus 273 so this is this is the sum as 165 all over 550 is equal to t minus 273 all over 100 so to get the term for each one, we cross multiply. So by cross multiply, we get t minus two seven three is equal to one six five all over five five zero times hundred. So t minus two seven three after evaluation is equal to um, one six five zero zero one four five five two this one is so t is going to be equal to three zero three Kelvin. Therefore option D is the answer. Question twenty five A column of air ten centimeter long is striped in a tooth at 27 degrees C. What is the length of the column at 100 degree C? So, um, question 25. So now let's solve the question 25. We assume a constant um, fridge and uniform area, meaning if area is uniform, it means area is constant. 
So now we have given that T1 is 273. We convert it to Kelvin minus 273, which is equal to 100 Kelvin. And again, we have T2, which is 100 plus 273, which is equal to 373 Kelvin. Now, for uniform area, for uniform area, let it be equal to A, meaning the area is constant. So for area to be constant, B1 is the length given which is 10 times what the area because volume is length times area. So time is A, A1 which is the sum as area which is 10A. And again, B2 similarly is L2 which is what we are looking for times what the area which is L2A. So now with this data, we can apply the general gas equation. So applying the general gas equation, we have P1 B1 over T1 is equal to P2 B2 over T2. So we know that the Frazier is constant, meaning P1 is equal to P2. So this go with this, which is equivalent to the expression of charge law from chemistry. That is, the, term, the volume is proportional to temperature. So over T2. Um, so we can substitute the data here. So now we have 10A all over the term feature, which is 300 is equal to B2, which is L2A all over T2, which is 373. So now we can cancel the area because they are equal. So our text is to find the lines. So to get the lines, we cross multiply. So by cross multiply, we have L2 is equal to 10 times 3, 7, 3, all over 300. So after evaluating, we get 12.4 centimeter. The correct option is option A. So here we are in question 26. The mass of gas at 7 degrees C and 70 centimeters of mercury has a volume of uh, 1200 centimeter cube. Determine it is volume at 27 degrees C and pressure of 75 centimeter of mercury. So now we will go to the solution. So here we are in question 26. So uh, we have given that T1 is 7 plus 273, which is equal to 280C. P1 is 70 centimeter of mercury. And again, P1 is 1200 centimeter cube. P2 is 75 centimeter of mercury and we are looking for P2 which is unknown but we have T2 is also equal to 27 plus 273 which is 300 Kelvin so we apply equation is general equation so P1 P1 over T2 is equal to P2 B2 over T2. So we are looking for B2. Now cross multiply and make B2 to be the structure which is equal to B1, B1, T2, all over, all over P2, T, T, all over P2, T1. So therefore we substitute our, our value. So B2. Seventy times one thousand two hundred times two two which is three hundred all over P two which is 
75 times 280 which is equal to 1200 cm therefore the correct option here is option E the answer is E Question 27. An electric heater is used to melt a block of ice mass 1.5 kg. If the heater is pulled by 12 volts battery and a current of 20 ampere plus two coils at 0 degree C, specific latent heat of fusion is equal to 336 exponential 3. Joule 5 kilogram 5 kilogram. So, so now um, we have given that the mass is 1.5 kilogram and the voltage is 12 volt. The current is 20 ampere. So, uh, we have latent heat of 336 3, 3, 3, 3, So um this is a combustion from electrical energy to heat energy. So know that the electrical energy is converted to heat. So the electrical energy is IBT, which is the heat energy. But this heat energy is the energy required to melt an ice, also required to heat the water. So this is ML. That is a latent heat, not the heat, normal heat we are seeing. So now uh, we are looking for the uh, the time. So we make the time to be the center of the formula, which is ML all over IB. What is M? M is 1.5 times L, which is 3, 3, 6 exponential 3 all over IB. I is 20 time is 12 so time is equal to 35 minutes after that sorry uh, time is equal to 2100 seconds so but in option we are given the time in minutes so we divide this to what by 60 so after dividing by 60 we get that time is 35 minutes therefore the correct option is option uh, question 28 from the kinetic theory of gases the temperature is a form of energy and is proportional to total kinetic energy of the molecule B, form of energy and is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecule. C, physical property and is proportional to the total kinetic energy of the molecule. D, physical property and is proportional to the average kinetic energy. The correct option is option D. Because a term feature is not a form of energy. Term feature is a physical thermodynamic property of a body. So, this is one part of the question. Then secondly, they have given a relation between temperature and energy. We know that from kinetic molecular theory of gases, the temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecule. This temperature is not proportional to the total energy, but to the, to to the average kinetic energy. Therefore, the correct option is option D. So, let's move to question 29. A boy timed 30 oscillations of certain pendulum trees and obtained 1 minute 10 second, 1 minute 12 second, and 1 minute 7 second, respectively. So, it means period of oscillation of the pendulum is so let's solve this question so we need to let some quantities now so let t1 to be equal to one minute 
and second so we need to combat it to second so combat one more minute to second we are multiplying by 60 now second plus what 10 second so which is equal to what 60 plus 10 which is 70 second again let t to t be equal to and question one minute comma then to second so which is equal to again one times 60 second plus what 12 second which is equal to 72 second and similarly the last time is t3 which is um, one minute seven second which is one times sixty plus seven all in second which is equal to sixty seven second so note that the number of oscillation is thirty so and again we know that the period is always equal to what the time over what the number of oscillations hence we can find the period of each one of the time so period of time one t1 is t1 over n which is what 70 over 30 similarly t2 is 72 over 30 t3 is 67 over 30. So what do we mean by average? Average is just a summation of the quantity divided by the, the number of the quantity. So now our quantity here is 3. So the average the average is going to be equal to the summation of them divided by 3. That is T1 plus T2 plus T3 on over 3 because there are 3 in number. So this is equal to what? 70 over 30 plus 72 over 30 plus 67 over 30 all over 3. So after we evaluate, this is equal to 2.32 seconds. So therefore the correct option is option C. What question 30? Which of the following is true of light and sound wave? A. They are both transmit energy. B. They are both need a medium for fabrication. C. They are both transverse wave. D. They travel their velocity in air high. Here the correct option is A because uh, the sound and light are both transmitting energy. The only difference is light transmitting light energy when sound transmitting light energy, but they are all form of energy. Therefore, light and sound are energy phenomena, are energy <coughs> transfer phenomena. So, in type option B, they both need medium for propagation, which is wrong actually. Sound need medium, medium for propagation, when light do not move, uh, do not require a medium for propagation, because it's longitude, uh, is transverse, but it's electromagnetic. So, they are both transverse, which is wrong because light is transverse, while sound is um, uh, longitudinal. Their velocities in air are equal, which is wrong because sound travel in velocity less than the velocity of light. Well, uh, less than the velocity of light. Well, light travel at exact velocity of light. So that is the uh, that is the reason. So uh, question thirty, the correct answer is A. Okay, <clears throat> first thing that one the image in the fin hole camera is a erect and formed by refraction through a lens, b virtual and formed by dispersion, c erect and get shapes as the hole become 
Arabs that the embedded are formed by the light when it point traveling in a straight line. So the correct option here is option B. The image form uh, is option D. The image always is embedded and formed by the light traveling from each uh, light from each traveling a straight line. That is when you have a camera, the light is formed by the what? Once you flash an object, it will reflect back. So the reflection will come with the, uh, the image or the figure of the image. So that is the embedded. It's given an embedded image. So therefore, the correct option is option D. So answer is D. So let's move to question 32. So that two says, when a planned meal at which a way is instant is rotated through an angle, the reflection the reflected ray will be rotated through A Q B Q C Q Q and D T Q. So this is the image when a mirror rotates through an angle. So without much wasting, wasting of time, the correct option is. 2q that is two times the angle so this is because the image form is real inverted for rotation if the plane mirror rotates through theta the reflected ray turns through angle to theta so therefore question 32 the correct answer is is option c which is 2 theta so question 33 a trough 12 centimeter deep is filled with water of refractive index 4 over 3 by how much will a coin at the bottom of the trough appear to be displayed when viewed vertically from the above surface so this is a computational question so we need to have a solution so now question 33. So we have given the data of the question. Um, so let's have a simple diagram for the question now. So supposing here is uh, a diagram. So we have from here to here is a half length distance that we can see, and we have the total distance which is 12 centimeter. And again, we have uh, a refractive index, which is 4 over 3, that is water. So now, <clears throat> this is like a person, this is a person that is looking through this. So this is the point, the limit to which he can see that the point appear. So this is afferent day. From here to here, it's afferent, this is a real day. So now applying the signal slow, which says that the refractive index is always equal to the real deal all over the afferent deal. So by making the afferent deal to be the same as a formula, afferent deal is the uh, uh, afferent deal times the, word, the refractive index. So we now substitute. Um, sorry, we are looking for afferent deal, not a real deal. So um, if that's the case, the afferent deal is equal to what real deal all over n. So, which is equal to what is a real deal? Real deal is 12 all over the um, uh, refractive index, which is 4 over 3. By taking the reciprocal, we find that the afferent deal is 9 centimeter. So now, this is afferent deal, and we are looking forward to find the, uh, the display display distance or displacement by the coins. So the display distance or display height the displayed height is equal to the real d minus the afferent div which is equal to um, which is equal to 12 minus 9 which is 3 centimeter therefore the correct option is option A question 34 in a ray diagram for thin converging lens, a ray that is 
not to parallel to the optic axis but passes through the optical optic center will a uh, passes through undeviated b passes through the center of curvature and refraction c the match parallel to the principal axis d passes through the principal focus after reflection so the, the correct option here is option a this is because the way remain undeviated hence the way instant on the surface as any angles will be refracted twice at parallel interface this means that it is undeviated because it's incident parallel uh, refracted twice at parallel interface so it's undeviated because it's parallel therefore the correct option is option a so question 34 answer is option e so question 35 which of the following correctly describe the image of an object four centimeter from a divergent lens or focal lens minus 12 centimeter so let us have a solution to this question so question 34 35 so question 35 we have given that the distance of object is one centimeter the focal length is minus 12 centimeter so we now apply the equation which is 1 over u plus 1 over b so we are looking for b that means 1 over f minus 1 over u is equal to 1 over b so 1 over b is 1 over f that is minus 1 over 12 minus 1 over 4 so the LCM here is is 12 so 1 over B is 12 and 12 into 12 is 1 1 times minus 1 minus 1 12 into 4 minus 3 okay so this is equal to minus 4 over 12 which is equal to minus 1 over 3 so by taking the reciprocal B is equal to minus 3 minus 3 centimeter so this is negative meaning what virtual virtual image is produced hence the correct option is option a that is the image is virtual three centimeter in front of it as so it's virtual and three centimeters as well so the correct option is option option a um, question 36 we said <clears throat> two turning fork of frequency 256 hertz and 260 hertz are sounded close to each other what is the frequency of the bit so the bit frequency is always equal to the bit frequency is equal to always f2 minus what f1 and from the question f2 is what f2 is 260 hertz and f1 is 256 hertz so the bit frequency is equal to 260 minus 256 which is equal to hertz so the correct option is option b Okay, question 37. A boy sits in a train moving with a uniform speed on a straight track. A firm is outreach firm. He gently tosses a coin vertically upwards. The coins will fail A in front of his pen, B behind the film, C behind the film, and D into the film. The correct option is D because when it moves in a straight line the object is expected to fall into the film because they are moving with uniform speed with the same speed so it cannot overtake or falling down at the back of the what of the film so it will fall into the film therefore the correct option is option 
Mati Then 38 Your body starts from west And moves with the uniform accelerations Of 6 meter per seconds Per second square What distance does it cover In such circle So now This is a question Which requires a conceptual understanding Of equation of motions So um, Now Touch edge. So acceleration is given by six meter per second square. And now we apply the equations of motions, which is U T plus a half A T square. So it's starting from rest. U is equal to zero. This means that this term is zero. So S is equal to a half. A T square. So in this case, we are looking for the distance at the uh, third time. So let us find the distance in the second time. That is in two second in the first two second. So the distance, let it to be S two, which is a half A T square. So a half acceleration is. 6 and times t square which is 2 square so this is equal to or well, let's leave it like this in third seconds the distance is a half times 6 and times 3 square so the time the distance in third seconds that the distance in third seconds is going to be equal to this thing in first three second minus this thing in first two second so this distance is equal to a half times six times three square minus a half times six times two square so now this distance a half is common six is common then we have 3 square minus 2 square so this is equal to 6 divided by 2 is 3 3 square is 9 minus 4 so this distance is 3 into 5 so distance is equal to 3 times 5 which is 15 meter therefore the answer is 15 meter the correct option is option A then uh, second to the last question 39 says a body, uh, I mean a, a stone cube is thrown with a velocity u at an angle of 75 degree to the horizontal. Another stone r is thrown with the same velocity u but an angle of 15 to the horizontal. The wind covered by the stone will be a greater for q, greater for r, the same for q, greater for heavier on the stone so this question is a question that requires mutual or conceptual understanding of projectile motion in fact uh, we know that a range is equal to for a range at an angle r square sine 2 theta over g so since g is constant and u is also constant therefore range is directly proportional to sine to angle so the higher the angle the higher the range so when we look at the question the q has the highest angle which is 75 well the r has the small angle which is between therefore q will have the highest range compared to r therefore from the question you know that range in q range in Q must be greater than range for R because the angle in Q is greater than the angle in R therefore the correct option is option A then the last question say a man waits waiting within 800 newton kilometers applied of stir to a height of 
15 meter in 12.5 second was man's average speed so what average power output so now let's get the data custom 40 so we have given that the pulse is 800 newton and the hurry is 15 meter and we also have the time is 12.5 seconds so now the power output is always equal to force times velocity force times velocity over over the time oh force times height all over the time so now this is equal to the force is 800 newton times the height which is 15 all over time 12.5 which is equal to 9600 watt so therefore the red option is option C so this comes to the end of our today's tutorial video on jump physics first question please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Khalil Drones once we have a new video it will indicate in the YouTube so be free mind to subscribe to our YouTube channel my name is Inusarabi Isa. See you later. Thank you for watching.